Hey everybody out there, it's DIY Guy XD. Um, again, in my car, just thought I'd do another video. Uh, real quick, um, like I said in my previous video, I was talking about local gun shops and you know so on and so forth. I'd like to talk about maybe some of the different types of people that work in these gun shops. And I, I hate to stereotype or pigeonhole anybody, but the fact of the matter is, a lot of these people are there's certain personality types. When I was in martial arts, we had certain personality types that would run through. There was the guy who um, we we called him the trophy guy, and you know, at a certain age, he had to have his you know the red sports car, and then you know the girlfriend. It was like he was ticking off check marks on you know his man you know list, and it's funny because I mean you you could totally see it every single time. The guy would be like, oh you know, well you know I'm gonna make it to black belt, and then he's gonna quit. Well, what a lot of people don't realize is in, in most martial arts, once you reach some sort of expert level, and even if you do reach black belt in a specific martial art, it does not mean that you're an expert. It just means that you've passed some tests and that you've done okay. You know, really the training begins at a, a higher level because you're going to be more open to it and you're going to be more able and more physically fit in order to do these things. But I digress. I'd like to talk a little bit about the personalities of some of these gun shop guys. And I'm going to do a more expanded video when I've got a little bit more time. I'm just really kind of heated from being in this gun shop and really just hearing all this bull crap. You know, so basically, I mean, you, you've got several different personalities. The first personality I'd like to talk about would be the old timer. Um, that's one way. Uh, the older guy just sort of maybe kind of looks a little bit crazy, maybe not, or maybe just an older dude, you know what I mean? That's fine, whatever. But he's behind the counter, and he's going to try to sell you a gun. And you go in there, and you have a list of everything that you'd like, his features maybe, or maybe not. Maybe you just want to buy a gun. Well, he's going to automatically steer you towards anything that 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 you've chosen is probably not going to be good enough. For, for, for him. He's got all kinds of expert knowledge, but it's in one specific area. It's not so much in many different areas. You know, he does not like plastic guns. You know, plastic guns are terrible guns, and you need an all steel frame gun, and you need a 1911, and 1911s are the best. Folks, I'm here to tell you, I love 1911s. They're beautiful guns. Some of them I've got are nail drivers. They're great. But at the same time, they take a lot of work some sometimes, and I mean they need a lot of work to run correctly. Um, you know, I'm not saying they're terrible guns. I'm saying they just need a lot of work some sometimes, and sometimes it's not the best gun for a beginner. Sometimes a polymer type of gun is a good gun. You know, I'm not a huge Glock guy, but I but I will shoot them. Uh, I'm more of a Springfield guy. Uh, really like the Springfield XDs, so that's what I tend to steer towards. And that leads me to the next sort of personality, is you have these sort of enthusiast, and you know I, I could fall in that category. You know they're going to automatically tell you that every gun that you talk about is a shit gun, is a crap gun compared to what their company could do, or not. It, well, see, I kind of messed up there, but I really want you to get the gist of it. It's not really their company, but they view this as their company. They talk about the gun and the company as if they're synonymous, as that they're one thing. Like, okay, say for me, for instance, I love Springfield. I mean, look at this. I'm always wearing this hat, the XD gear hat. I actually have a couple of them, so I'm not always wearing a smelly hat around. But point is, I might start pointing every, if I worked behind the counter, I'd be like, oh, well, Springfields are great. You know, it was something, you know, has, it's our American heritage, you know, uh, even though they're not necessarily made here anymore, but and said, you know, it was something that was commissioned by General George Washington, and, you know, I mean, I, I would have a backstory on it, and I'd be so tied into that. And that's what this guy is. He's more of an enthusiast. He's going to try to push you towards what he thinks is best, which, if you're coming in there for an opinion, that's great, but you need a wide variety. Um, I went to uh, Kentucky Gun Co. recently, and the guy that, I, that, that was behind the counter was a really good guy. You know, I, I would just call him, there's no label for him, he was just a good salesman. And he showed me everything I wanted to say, see, he had good and bad things to say about all of it. Uh, we both agreed that we did not necessarily like high points all that much, but that was because of experience that I've had with him and experience that he's had with him. Now, I've owned high points, and it's a whole other discussion, so I'm just 
going to stop right there. So anybody who wants to say anything about their high points, leave in the comments sa section. If you like your high point, tell me why. I'd really like to know. But, okay, so you've got the enthusiast. And then, so we talked about the old timer, we talked about the enthusiast. Then you have the, the, the other type, type of guy. You've got the newbie. And which kind of scares me a little bit. And you're going to find the newbie. Actually, I find them recently in, in a lot of gun stores because they, they've had to hire new help because of all the different guns that they've been selling and everything's been going on. So the newbie knows absolutely zero, zilch, about guns, really. All he knows is what he's been told or what he's been read to, you know, maybe an hour's worth, worth of training. Maybe they took him out and they let him shoot, you know, like an SKS or, you know, they let him shoot couple of handguns, something like, like that, you know, he doesn't know jack shit, and he's basically just going to have company brochures, and he's going to say, okay, you know, if you come in, you say, hey, look, I'm looking for that Walther PPX, which is not a bad gun, by the way, it's got a great trigger on it, and it's not that expensive, but I digress again, um, he's going to tell you everything is good, you know, except for what he's been told is exactly bad, which he has no experience, and this is very bad for, for a beginner. So, we've talked about the old-timer sort of guy, we've talked about the enthusiast guy, we've talked about the newbie guy, there's all kinds of them. And then, of course, there's always the, the, the veteran, I like to call him, you know. Uh, he's been around for a very long time, you know, uh, he doesn't really necessarily have, he's got experience with guns, he's shot guns for years, but he's not, he's not military, but he likes to kind of sort of pretend like he's military. And which really pisses me off because there's so many good people that serve our country. And that's the last thing they need is some asshole. Absolutely. And I apologize for my language. I really do. But I get fired up about this. Because serving our country is a big deal. And I really wish that I could have done it. And I really would have done it. But I've got several different issues that stop me from being able to do that. And, uh, you know, I, I won't go into that right now. I might go into that in another, another, another video when we talk about it qualifying to go into the military, you know, to actually protect our country. I was not, could not do it. But the, the fact is, you know, he maybe could have, but didn't because he was a little bit afraid to go, maybe? Um, don't know. But he wears a lot of camo. May not, but usually does. Uh, has a lot of war stories that he's heard from friends or heard from relatives or whatever and talks about how this gun is just so great. You need an AK because you can drop them in the water and they'll still fire and da 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 Which is fine and great, but if somebody comes in and they're saying, if a man comes in and he's like, I need a gun that I can conceal. Or a, a lady comes in and is like, I need a gun I, I can conceal. Not going to be able to throw that AK, like, necessarily in, in their back pocket or in, or in, or in their purse, you know? Uh, they want to see some, something else. And then so, you know, he gets sort of lost in all the stories and then starts pushing you towards guns that he's been told by other people that are good and that aren't, aren't necessarily good. And then he's the one that tries to sell you all the magazines and all the different accessories and all that stuff because you might need them, you know. You never know when SHTF's going to happen, which... It could happen. I don't know, guys. You know, it totally could. But right now, I'm not thinking about SHTF. Right now, I'm thinking about, I want to go in, I want to buy a gun, and I want to get started. So these are the things, those guys, we, we've talked about some of the the gun shop guys, and, that, and that's fine. And the last one I'm going to talk about is a complete and total asshole. He's the guy who's wearing a gun holstered and looks at you immediately and assesses you completely and tries to make you feel like your crap and you know if you're wearing a gun in there he'll make sure he'll be like well depending on their rules if they don't allow you know guns to be loaded he's gonna be like you need to make sure that's unloaded leave that out in your car you know he's gonna be a total a asshole and every time that you ask him to show he, him you any gun he's gonna be just completely totally put out it's like it's like he's doing you a favor so just beware of these guys you're gonna find a lot of these guys in most of your gun stores but you might find the good guy I guess is what you'd call him anybody who's willing to show you what you want to see that's the guy that you want to deal with if he's a guy who does not want to show you something or they start acting the way that I've been talking about just go to a different store or ask for, for, for somebody else so that's the end of my video hope you guys have a good weekend thank you much